j'ai pas mal bossé sur le simulateur de vol l'année dernière qui nous a permis d'estimer, de, d'imaginer comment le bateau allait se comporter. On retrouve en réalité des, des comportements qu'on avait vus sur le simulateur, qu'on a été capable d'anticiper. Ce qu'on voyage nous permet de nous rendre compte un peu de, du comportement du bateau euh, au large. Là, on a des vraies conditions euh, océaniques que vont rencontrer le bateau en course. C'est un, euh, un vrai galop d'essai pour, pour les courses à venir. Ça permet de, de comparer avec la réalité et puis euh, bah de, de réajuster un peu nos estimations, imaginer comment on va, on va faire évoluer le bateau par la suite. C'est plutôt euh, du temps de gagner pour nous dans, dans l'apprentissage euh, des réglages et du comportement du bateau. Par rapport à ce qu'on a connu par le passé, c'est clairement beaucoup plus stable. Donc ça, c'est une, euh, une vraie réussite, une vraie satisfaction. Après, on le découvre euh, encore, donc euh, on voit qu'on qu a clairement gagné en, en, en stabilité, en vitesse, en stabilité de vitesse aussi. Le bateau continue à aller vite dans la mer formée. Le comportement du bateau est grisant, il va vite, il est, euh, il est agréable, il est, euh, il est très marin, il a un comportement euh, plutôt, euh, plutôt safe, donc ça, c'est vraiment satisfaisant. This is the Sailing World on Water, July 16th, 2021. Here are our highlights in the sport of sailing, globally, in the last seven days. To open our report today we featured the huge French trimaran bank Popular 11, and they were testing for safety at speed. In the UK the ROSC started the Cows, Denard, St. Malo race. 130 yachts started, and the overall winner under IRC, Eno 30, was awarded the magnificent King Edward VII Cup, presented by the British monarch in 1906. It seems the sailors in the recent The Ocean Race Europe were happy with the race and want it repeated annually. The five-event 2021 Kite Foil World Series got underway for 99 competitors July 8th to 11th in Gazeria, Italy. After four days and 17 races, Denis Taradin, Russia, and Daniela Moros, USA, won the Open and Women's titles. Now we start coverage with day one. We show the GC32 Lagos Cup regatta wrap. There were six teams with a Lingi winning. The pro sailing tour started with the 24-hour challenge, a course of more than 300 nautical miles that tested the trimaran's offshore capabilities in the trade wind conditions that prevail in the islands. The start took place in front of San Cristobal, south of Marina Las Palmas, from where the fleet then headed out to round Gran Canaria, in a counterclockwise direction. In the Medit Malta, the beautiful yachts in the Trophy Bailey de Suffren completed their journey after starting the final leg from Gozo to Malta, just outside Maga Harbour known as Ninezat El Ama. In a race characterized by light winds not exceeding seven knots, the fleet enjoyed some of Malta's most scenic points. Day four was the final day for the kite foilers and it was presentation time. We have a promo for the coming route to run. It's another exciting French short-handed sailing event across the Atlantic, from France to the Caribbean. Finally, we are following Hugo the sailing Frenchman as he works up for the October 6.5 meter class transatlantic solo race. He is in one of the lead-up races. Let's all get behind him as he comes in the top 10 in this race. Breaking news from the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia that their Noak Sydney to the Gold Coast race has been postponed with a new date to be announced, and they have also announced an inaugural Australian Maxi Championships which will consist of four races in December featuring Maxis, 80 to 100 foot, Mini Maxis, 60 to 79 foot, and Racer Cruisers, over 60 feet. Now over to the Raw Cow St. Malo start.
Uh, the Ocean Race Europe is great. I think it's a great concept. It should happen every year. It should last a month to a month and a half, going around the whole of Europe, very fast rhythm, do a lot of pro-am sailing, guest sailing, uh, coastal sailing, just non-stop. Europe is, you know, a, a union of nations and we need to have a race that just joins them together. And we need a race like this to happen every year. Yeah, it has been probably one of the nicest events since uh, yeah, a long time. I hope, I hope this uh, race will bring us closer to the start to the next ocean race. And um, yeah, I'm, I can't actually wait to, <laughs> to get to the starting line. Yeah. Well, I think first of all, to me personally, I just love the ocean race. So, and I think it has been a very good uh, event just for all the, for, especially for the, for the new teams, because uh, I think it has been an eye opener for them and to see what all the possibilities are also for their partners. So I think in that sense, it has been, uh, has been excellent that this race has been organized. So that's, uh, yeah, that's just a huge thumbs up for everybody involved. The Ocean Race Europe has truly been a special event because it's, it's in very special times that we are now. We have a tough year behind us and it's still not over the pandemic. And to see how the cities in Europe, how the teams from Europe and across the world and, and us as a race organization with our partners have come together that has truly shown what ocean racing is about, doing the extraordinary and the values that has been created for the benefit of ocean health and for the benefit of partners and teams is great. Seeing the smiles and the happiness on the sailors that have been able to do this race, that has been the, the big reward to me. I think it's just been fantastic and to pull it off here in such a difficult couple of years for the world uh, and for companies and everything is, is really, really amazing feat. You know, my hat's off to the Ocean Race for, for, for organising and also for all the teams and sponsors that have, that have helped. Um, I think the racing was great. Uh, I think it's the first racing we as a team have done since 2019. Uh, so that in and of itself was very special. I think everyone enjoyed themselves. And in general, it was just amazing to, uh, to see all this uh, Yosha Race Europe. We, uh, we really enjoyed it and it, it tastes for more. We want to go for the big one. I think there is so much to learn from doing these kind of races. The, the, the guys who are going to get involved in this race with their boats, with their Amoka 60s, are going to learn a lot. The other thing is like uh, the mission Ocean Race Carry about the sustainability and saving the oceans. I think that's really powerful and not many sports uh, can actually make an impact or, or send this, this, this strong message. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of, of where we are and what we're doing. After this and after being here in the Ocean Race Europe, I'm more motivated than ever to, to keep on going. We, we now start preparing for the Around the World race and we work with the 10 cities around the world that we will visit, starting from Alicante, Cape Verde, Cape Town, Shenzhen, Auckland, Itajue, Newport, Aarhus, The Hague and back here Genoa in, uh, in two years. So we are the hub in a network of cities, of teams, of partners and we keep working with all our stakeholders for the next two years to make the best possible ocean race ever in 22-23. Uh, it's gonna be so good. Everybody's super pumped to be out on the course. We're all gonna be lining up, ready to go. Everybody's gonna be going so fast, putting everything they have into it, 100%. I'm super happy with how today went. I've been working on some specific things, um, more on the strategy and tactic side of racing. So 
Um, I was practicing those today and it went really well and I was really happy with that. And yeah, the rest of this week, just keep doing the same thing, trying to improve day by day and race by race and yeah, have a fun time. No, it's re really nice to to be back on the on the game, and um, yeah, I was not I was not expecting this on the first day. I had some really good um, starts. I, I had a nice sport tag start and uh, some nice decision around the course. So uh, yeah, it felt pretty nice. Welcome back to the GC32 Racing Tour here now, uh, starting the season 2021 in Lagos, Portugal for the first event. Very happy to be back after a break for one year and with these beautiful conditions racing here in Portugal. It's definitely a good feeling to be back on the boat and uh, especially here with uh, some good breeze uh, foiling upwind downwind it's always nice and uh, like with the team uh, we have a lot of fun being back on the boat and also racing is really nice. It's uh, great we did a lot of training uh, in Switzerland last year also this year in the central part of Switzerland but it's even better to race against other boats than still training alone somewhere in the world. perfect uh, opening of the season for the GC2 this year. Uh, we feel uh, really confident coming in this event, but uh, new team, so we didn't know what to expect. And uh, we were really happy uh, with uh, how strong was the fleet, because every race was a big fight on the water with uh, everyone. So we had to work really hard to make sure we were ahead of them. Thanks a lot. C'est un parcours assez original, c'est vrai que faire le tour du Nil c'est toujours, toujours sympa d'avoir un but. Oui, parcours sympa, pas évident pour les neurones parce que on part là, on est un peu dans la canalisation, on passe par le, par le nord où il y aura un effet tampon, puis euh, contournement, pas de vent dessous. Ça va être le gros passage un peu, un peu compliqué, mais là ben, on n'a pas le choix, on va y aller, donc on verra bien pour une fois. On va voir la côte sud de Grande Canaria de près. Two, one, Oui, c'est ça, ça va être 24 heures sans sommeil du tout. Euh, on va partir avec cette idée-là et puis euh, si on a le temps de se faire une petite sieste ou deux, on, on le fera. Okay. 
plus Aujourd'hui sur le Proceeding Tour, la classe Ocean 50 passe en mode inshore, c'est-à-dire qu'on passe de 3 à 5 équipiers à bord. On va avoir des rôles beaucoup plus précis, il y aura des numéros 1, des tacticiens, des règleurs de voile. Qu'est-ce que ça change ben, Les régates vont être vachement plus courtes, environ une heure. Beaucoup de virements, beaucoup d'empannage, on va être sur des parcours construits, donc il va falloir qu'on aille chercher des bouées et qu'on aille couper la ligne d'arrivée. Voilà, c'est ça les inshore. C'était vachement plus dur que les autres épisodes, euh, surtout les conditions, le, les complexités des plans d'eau, euh, les vagues, le, le vent, tout ça, ça faisait que c'était pas facile. Euh, surtout en euh, milieu de journée aujourd'hui, les derniers jours, on a eu un petit euh, moment de peur où Arkema avait gagné deux manches, ils avaient que trois points derrière nous et on sait très bien que trois points, ça peut être perdu rapidement. Donc on a eu une petite peur, mais heureusement, on a gagné le manche d'après et ça nous a laissé un peu de, de marge pour pouvoir courir la dernière manche euh, tranquillement. Et vainqueur pour Letton. day today the guys are really pumping the level is really good and yeah hopefully I'm coming back for the next event hopefully soon and do better so now we're on the goal league final day today I'm really excited I hope my equipment holds up and I hope my performance holds up and uh, I hope there will be some clean racing today Today was a, a very tough day, we had three races, two on a light wound and uh, the third one on kind of moderate wind on the 15th. 
Uh, my main priority was say to, to, to fight with Axel. He's a very consistent rider and um, we're neck and neck every single race. And at the end of the day, I, I managed to win the last race and the last race was for all the marbles. Um, huge respect to, to Axel, to every single rider, to Tony, to Connor, to Maxime, everyone who's racing. Um, the level is amazing and I'm, I'm grateful to, to be able to win in such a big and powerful fleet. good day. Um, I love kiting here. It's one of my favorite spots in the world. So it's, yeah, just such a good vibe. Really love this place. Um, and yeah, I was just trying to stay consistent and working on the things that I want to be improving. And really excited for the rest of this year. It's going to be good. between Lilieu and Rochebonne. Uh, still okay. One boat passed me and I just can't get the boat to accelerate as much as the other. I don't really get why, it's annoying. But the race is still long so we'll keep pushing. And, uh, and yeah, still a pretty nice day on the water. I'm not going to complain, just need to keep fighting.
Well, the night has been pretty difficult for me. The sea state was like that. Super disorganized, really hard to steer. Um, and also, I just could not find the right balance for the boat. And I I've lost like 10 spots. I just couldn't figure out how to trim properly those new sails. I'm super upset against myself. So at some point I just, you know, even I could not get the right speed and everything, I just took a bit upper course and just went to sleep for a bit. So at least not being slow and exhausted. At least I was slow and now I'm rested. And let's see what comes. There's still more than half of the race to come. Lots of tricky conditions. Now I'll push back to come back in the mix, but yeah, so annoying. For once I'm taking a good start. Anyway, now let's go and catch up. I have no idea about where are the others. Uh, I know there is Julie behind me, there is Anne Claire just under me there, and then I have no idea. I, I really, really hope some of the guys tried to go in between Belil and uh, the islands and got stuck there. But there is no way to be sure, so. Let's see and hope for the best. After all my mistakes from the night, it would be a nice miracle. But hey, one can hope, right? Alright, let's go back to some piloting. 
at that point you really need to be focusing on the waves on like what's coming that's why i put some music on and just go 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 all right it's been now 48 hours at sea and i'm about 30 miles from the finish line and it's this kind of 30 miles that lasts for ever the wind died there is six knots of wind plus current it's really hard let's see because i took a really risky option let's see if it pays off uh but really it was kind of following the pack and i don't think the order would have changed much and if this works uh i might be able to gain a few spots and uh and what i like also about the mini is that we don't have any ranking while we're on the water so if you're around some boats you see them on air yes but in my case i see you know two three four mile on ais in the best case scenario and now they took an option that took them uh, further away than this so i don't know i'm just by myself i have one competitor which is behind me now just go and maybe take a nap not much else i can do sea is quite flat mode is steering by herself what else all right this got to be the slowest arrival ever so it looks like i'm going this way but i'm actually going this way so much current dragging me in this direction in french we call it tirer des bords carré c'est la vie almost there Woo! i'm almost on the finish line and i'm pretty sure i'm in the top 10 it's really confused there's people everywhere my move this morning kind of worked, but at the same time, not as much as I wanted to. But anyway, been lots of different things in this uh, in this race. I've learned a lot, so that's cool. And uh, and yeah, all right, let's end the mile to the finish and go for a beer.